Well, the clowns over at IGN might have outdone themselves. They are attempting to justify and shill the microtransactions for Dragon's Dogma 2. Let's dunk on them. Dragon's Dogma 2's glowingly positive critical reception is juxtaposed with an overwhelming number of negative reviews on Steam due to the reveal of a whole list of microtransactions that let you buy everything from camping kits to fast travel enabling port crystals for a few bucks a pop. Let's take a look at each of these items, explain what they're used for, how easy it is to obtain them in the actual game, and consider how egregious the microtransactions actually are. Extremely egregious, by the way. That's the answer. Well, let's hear him, Shell. First let's off, see what he has to say. Explorer's camping kit. Camping kits are what you need to rest at campfires out in the wilderness. They are, no doubt, a very important item, but they are also very easy to find. You'll find your first one pretty much on the beaten path while you're following Gregor to the capital, and you can buy them at pretty much any item merchant in a variety of different weights and themes for fairly cheap. The only reason why this might be a tempting buy using real money is if your camp gets ambushed and destroyed, leaving- Well, you know, that's part of the issue. They need to create a reason for you to buy these items. They wouldn't put these items in his DLC if there was a never a reason that someone would want to buy them. Also, the fact that you can even buy them is the issue in of itself, not how much do you need them. Like, for the record, IGN, that's why gamers are so upset. We don't want microtransactions in our single-player game. It's not a matter of do we need to buy it. It's a matter of why on earth are there 21 microtransactions in our $70 game. Single-player game, mind you. That's the main issue. But speaking about the camp supplies, specifically the camping kit, while he is right, like they are pretty easy to find if you do get jumped like right now which is what he's saying your campfire gets attacked and you only have one now you're screwed you'd probably want to like go teleport out because if you don't know nighttime and dragon's dogma is a very dangerous place and this is a game that rewards exploration you know going on an adventure going down the unbeaten path and when you're doing that and now you get jumped and if you don't happen to have another camping kit on you like you're probably screwed so your option is to get the hell out of there or like I said, if you don't have another camping kit on you, what are you going to do? I would never buy it, but some people might. Some people might not want to lose progress. They might not want to teleport back. They would then buy the camping kit. ...you without a way to rest until you make it back to a major town. For this reason, I'd always recommend having two camping kits, one equipped on your person and one equipped on your pawn as a backup. Otherwise, being stranded in the wilderness without a camp is about as good of a reason as any to use a fairy stone to get back to town. Yeah, like I just said, like it's dangerous, you want to get out of there, which is why people would possibly feel the need to buy that item. Harpy snares are actually fairly rare in my experience. I've only come across five of them in the 50 hours I've played, and for the life of me... I so that's one per 10 hours played. I couldn't tell you where they're from. Talking with peers, it seems like they're generally rewards for random monster cullings or rescue missions that you encounter in the wilds. In any case, the use for these is to call Harpy to you and grab onto it so that you can fly to an out of reach treasure chest. It is a very situational item, and there's only been a few times I felt like I've ever actually needed to use it, as throwing pawns to out of reach treasure chests usually accomplishes the same thing. Dude, in the opening of this video, you showed yourself using a harpy to get to a chest that you would not be able to get to otherwise. Are you serious, man? And like, once again, this is a game that rewards exploration. If you are out exploring and you see a treasure chest that you cannot get otherwise, but you know, hey man, if I had a harpy stone, I could reach that, you might feel tempted to do this. Once again, the general players are not gonna, like I'm not gonna, the people who are watching this and agreeing with me aren't gonna, but someone might. And that's the issue. That's why they're in the game to begin with. The whole someone might do it because the devs or the suits at Capcom have created a need for it. You need that item to do something. If you do not have that item, sure, you could get it elsewhere. But in that exact moment, if you want to get that chest up there while you're traveling and not have to backtrack, you would have to buy it as DLC. That is the issue. Heartfelt Pendants are an item that you can use to increase your relationship rating with a character. Truth be told, I haven't found one of these yet in my experience, so I checked it out by buying it and gifting it to the sweet little bartender in Vernworth. Okay, so he he's saying he straight up could not find this item anywhere, so he had to buy it? Alright, we're off to a great start so far. It instantly brought her relationship level to the point where she would blush at me and leave me gifts and flirty messages at my house. Which, I mean, I guess that's cool. But I've also already got several other characters that I've gotten to that level just by playing through side quests. Brother. 
Are you listening to what you're saying? You just said you had to buy a heartfelt pendant because you could not find one in-game, so you had to spend real money in order to get the cat girl NPC bartender to like you. And your rationale for why this is okay is that there are other characters in-game who already like you and send you love letters? What are you talking about? This is a $70 game that someone purchased as an RPG. If they want to have a bartender or any other random NPC like them just because they like the way that character looks, it's apparently paywalled or at the very least behind a very hard item to find, and you're saying that is okay? Dude, what are you doing? So unless you really like the idea of making any PC into your boyfriend slash girlfriend slash cat person friend, you probably don't need this item. It's not a matter of needing it. It's a matter of you paid $70 for the game, you should be able to access all the content. Ambivalent Rift allows you to randomly change your pawn's inclination. I don't know why you'd want to pay money for this because for one, you can't choose what your pawn sounds like, and for two, you can buy this item from the pawn guild in Vernworth for 500 RC anyway. Now, why this guy might not be able to figure out why someone would want this, the suits at Capcom, for some reason, believed they would. And I'm sure people have already bought it. Anyway, if you did want to change your pawn's inclination to a specific inclination, you can do that too at the same place, though it costs much more RC. As far as I've been able to tell, makeshift jail keys have one notable use. If you get thrown in jail after committing some sort of crime in town, you can use them to unlock your cell and escape. Y you don't say. You don't say that the jail key has one use, and that's escaping the jail. All right, thank you. You could, though, alternatively bribe the guard with gold, find a key in your cell, or find a breakable wall. There was a moment I encountered in the Bakbatal jail where I was out of makeshift keys, didn't have the money anymore to bribe, and couldn't find any other way to escape. In that very hyper-specific situation, I could see the temptation to buy a key, but for any other scenario, there's absolutely no reason to ever spend money on one of these. Once again... Did you read what you wrote down before you decided to narrate this video? The only time you would ever need a jail key is the hyper-specific situation, one in which he went through, when you are stuck in a jail cell, you can't find a wall to break, you have no jail keys on you, and you have no gold to bribe the guard. That's the only time you would need to buy a jail key. You don't say. Brother, come on. Art of Metamorphosis allows you to change the appearance of your pawn at a barbary, something that I can imagine someone might want to do. You can do, imagine? But once again, you can get this in game for a relatively inexpensive 500 RC. And now. There is no shot. He just spent 10 seconds on what is arguably the most egregious microtransaction in all of Dragon's Dogma 2 $2 to edit your character. And sure, he's saying there's an item in game that you can get for relatively cheap, but let me explain to you why that doesn't exactly matter in this scenario. I've already made a video on it, but let me summarize. In Dragon's Dogma 2, you only get one character. The first character you create, you are stuck with them forever. You cannot delete them, it is saved on the cloud. There is no new game option in Dragon's Dogma 2. So, let's just say you were playing Dragon's Dogma 2, you made your character, you thought you liked him, but then you get in game, you swing your sword, you hear his voice. Oh, you don't like how he sounds. Or maybe you just don't like how he looks, honestly. The lighting makes him look a little bit different than when you created him. No harm, no foul, you'll just go create a new character, right? You can't. You're stuck with him. For however many hours it takes to find the one NPC to buy the one item to then bring to the other NPC for you to change your character. So you need to play through the beginning hours of the game with a character you don't like unless you spend $2. That is not acceptable, and I cannot believe that this dude at IGN did not comment on that at all. He just legit left it at 10 seconds and walked away. That's insane to me. Port crystals. All right, so here's where things get sketchy. All right, at least he's calling out the port crystal garbage. Everything up to this point has ranged from either being very situational to easily obtained by other means to being mostly useless for the most part. But port crystals are actually a big deal. These are portable fast travel waypoints that you can drop wherever you want and use a fairy stone to travel to them. They are exceedingly rare in this game, with there only being two stationary ones in Vernworth and Harb Village, and four portable ones that I've found usually as big rewards for lengthy side quests or by finding exceptionally well-hidden secrets. And just to be clear, intentionally designing an element of the game to be limiting and then providing a paid way to circumvent that limitation is kind of gross. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's extremely scummy, especially when Dragon's Dogma 2, the dev is like hyping it up as, oh man, we love exploration. We want you to explore our world. Don't fast travel. That's why these stones are so hard to come by. And then you're allowed to buy them. That's crazy. And simple. 
It sucks, and all I can say is that while having one or two extra port crystals definitely would be helpful, you still also need fairy stones to travel, and those cannot be purchased with real money. So while having extra port crystals does help with fast travel, you're still going to be limited by your fairy stone supply. Wake stones are used to bring you back to life with full life whenever you lose all of your health. Alternatively, they can also be used to resurrect NPCs that you may have killed. They're pretty rare and very useful, but also this game's autosaves are fairly generous and will always put you back at the start of any fight against a tough enemy. They're also not so rare to the point where you'll just never have them. You can actually find an item called the Demon's Gaze, located inside Vernworth Castle atop one of the towers, which will allow you to ping Wakestone Shard locations on the map in the once again, the argument isn't, do you need to buy these? The argument is, why are these in the game to begin with? Because it's a slippery slope. We really just should not be attempting to justify any of this. The immediate area. Then there are Rift Crystals, which is a currency used within the Rift to hire pawns that are higher level than you. Or, as mentioned earlier, to buy items that allow you to customize elements of your pawns. I never found myself needing to use Rift Crystals throughout my playthrough. You never want to hire a pawn that's too high of a level because you risk contracting Dragon's Plague. And if you're thorough in your exploration, you'll find forgotten rift stones out in the field, which will allow you to summon higher level pawns for free. So all in all, the only thing that's worth getting up in arms here about are the port crystals. And to be fair, it is pretty egregious. No, no, there, there's many things to get up in arms about, specifically the character creation and not being able to create a new character, which you just glossed over. Among many other things, I mean, this dude was trying to say the only time you would ever need a jail key is when you're in jail. Yeah, dude, we know. We're aware. There's definitely reason to be upset here, but at the same time, it is also true that these are completely ignorable. Let us know what you think down in the comments. Yeah, but we should not ignore them. We should tell the devs we will not stand for this. This is not okay. I am disappointed in IGN for attempting to justify, and with all due respect, honestly, shill for the Dragon's Dogma 2 microtransactions. I'll thumb it down. That's a decent ratio we got there. Man. What has gaming become, fellas?